Right, welcome to episode four of the D5 Football Podcast. This week, we're joined by Josh Reese of Aldershot. Uh, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, good, good. Yourself? Yeah, good. Sort of four form we're done now, getting into the swing of things with these. Uh, not as nervous. Um, so, <laughs> just for anyone who's new and said sort of what we're doing, not seen anything before, we're trying to uh, do hopefully weekly or maybe by uh, every two weeks podcasts with uh, a national league footballer, even a coach, a manager. Yeah, that type of thing. Have a chat with them, sort of get sort of an understanding of their career and what it's like to play in the National League and hopefully give a bit of exposure to sort of the National League, um, which it deserves and doesn't doesn't get. And there's also um if you want some League One and League Two stuff, there's D three D four on um foot um on Twitter and on YouTube where you can go and get lots of stuff. So leave those in the description so you can go and have a look. Uh first question we always ask, um, how'd you get into football? Oh, uh probably a uh, bit of a cliche answer you hear a lot it's literally just at a young age just um i can't remember exactly but whether it was just introduced to football playing outside uh school as a youngster going to sort of football camps um yeah just started playing really uh and it just kind of gathers pace from there if anything um always had a sort of strong kind of love for the game uh Still to this day, I uh, really enjoy football, uh, whether it be playing it, watching it. Um, all, I said all, the, all stuff like this, where you listen, read books about it. So, uh, yeah, kind of very early age. I, I know a few people that get into it quite a lot later, a uh, few late developers. But for me, no, it was maybe as soon as I could walk, to be honest. Uh, it was around kicking the football. And like I said, you can see that Arsenal was a youngster. Uh, what, what was the point where you sort of, because there's a point you go of when you realise you're just sort of a normal kid playing with your mates. The, the, was there a point when you realised, OK, this is not just me playing with mates having fun, it might be something that potentially is a career, whether that be at a professional level or even just sort of non-league part-time while you're doing something else? I think it probably is that first time where you're in an elite environment like an Arsenal, um, even at a young age or seven, eight, um, until then, like you say, it's pretty much playing with your mates. Um, it's fun. And, and don't get me wrong, it was still fun in that elite environment. I um, made some friends that, going through the age groups that I said you still speak to today and we had great times, but there is pressure. Uh, even at that age, you're you're working towards sort of the next level, the next level, will I make it into uh, sort of the under-12s and then 12 to 14, 14 to 16, and then full time and it is your job um so it, it's there's always that kind of underlying pressure i suppose as the years go by it becomes even more apparent uh like you say especially when it becomes your full-time op- occupation uh and then obviously whatever the level whether it be uh, your arsenal in the premier league or sitting so in non-league you're playing for three points on the saturday um there's pressure so um yeah, it was always there. Um, just I suppose as the years go by, it just is it, different levels to it. Mm. It gets said a lot about, uh, especially talk about the England national team and, and sort of players coming through and why are, you know England not as good as other team, other countries in terms of winning trophies and stuff. Like that. And it gets linked back to the youth teams. From your experience, then, was what what, what were the positives of that? And if you, if you can. Um, what, what would you say that there was also the benefits of perhaps a more, uh, perhaps a more non-elite sort of bringing up? Because we've had people on who they didn't get into it properly until they were sixteen, and that they were just doing whatever. There's anyone mm-hmm. playing as if they were just a normal average guy, and then sixteen they'd take it on properly. So what do you think the differences are between that? Uh, I think there's no wrong or right way of doing it. I think with an elite environment. Um, you say, for example, with me, I was lucky enough to, to be at a club like Arsenal where you're exposed to elite coaching, uh, top to top level coaches. The players you're with are at the time probably the, and we're talking about Arsenal at, that, at this time, you're probably playing with the best boys in the south of England or sort of in, in the London area. So it's very competitive. So you can't afford to sort of. Uh, slack or be off the pace you have to keep up with these lads and it only grew me as a player and as a person um 
and it gives you sort of that competitive edge where you've got to be at the forefront because it's such an elite environment and that carries on really throughout the age groups in terms of like the non sort of elite route uh, I'd say in many cases I've seen it gives people that maybe sometimes a bit of hunger because when you're in that elite environment you you do get used to it uh, you maybe take it for granted uh, and sometimes everything becomes a bit too easy everything's laid out for you your kit's done don't need to any boots like the pitches are like carpets well when you you've come through maybe sort of a non-league or sort of Sunday league it, you know what it's it's like it's uh it's back to the real grassroots and it gives you that hunger to sort of get out of there and it and it gives you an extra it gives you maybe more of a perspective of what real football is about and a lot of these kids now uh, in the elite environments maybe unless they don't break into the first team and they have to move down into maybe the EFL or non-league it's a it's a massive culture shock um so like I think I think with the the academies now they're definitely getting more um uh, players are getting more exposure to training there's more time what that's uh doing maybe in terms of is it giving them a rounded education as well as sort of a football education i don't know but um the hours they're getting on the pitch now are a lot more and you're probably now seeing more uh, especially the top players in those academies at an elite level technically and probably on par with other countries within Europe uh, and the world, you, you look at the England teams, the youth teams now that are winning the World Cups, the Euros, you've got the players coming through like your Sancho's, your Phil Foden's, mm. they're at a top, top level um, now in terms of their technical ability. So you, you can see the pros and the cons, it's, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. Sometimes I think would I have preferred to come through maybe a a different route, but I think it's how, it's what it's, it's always down to the player, it's how, how are you um, how, how how much you make of it yourself, if anything? Yeah, you said um, you mentioned about sort of the sort of what we call elite uh, sort of clubs and how they did it with the academy players having your boots and your kits laid out. I think it was uh, Alan Shaver did an interview and he was talking about back in his day that wasn't how it was done and it was like the type of thing where until you you know you you're only in the first team dressing room if you were in there playing or if you were cleaning it and there's this sort of um, sort of culture if you like of right that if you're not in the first team you clean all the you know you clean all the boots and do all that type of thing do you think that actually helps for some of them helps them actually develop not only not the football skills of course but as the personality wise that perhaps if they're a bit um i don't know what the word is but perhaps if, like you said taking it for granted do you think that actually helps them or is that perhaps some people the older players being thinking of their times and thinking oh, i enjoyed that being the 17 year old working the way up, or do you think that's something that could actually sort of benefit sort of some of the younger lads coming through now? I think it's definitely, um, it's definitely toned down a lot. I think it's just the world we live in now. It's much more of a sort of a PC world. Everyone said uh, needs to, uh, they need to go loads of health and safety before anything can happen, stuff like that. It all gets kind of kicked into touch, but I think there's definitely still a place for the hard graft it's like anything you've got to earn your stripes before you can um you've got to do the hard work and i think mm. if there are if there is still a place for that whether it be sweeping the changing rooms or cleaning the boots uh don't get me wrong i had jobs when i was a scholar and did i enjoy them no but you look back on them as an older pro and you think it instilled a humility into me um and i said i read stuff about another other elite sports you look at the new zealand rugby team the, the most successful sports team ever in sport and they do stuff like sweep the changing rooms the the, the basic things if they're still doing it then there's no excuse for the the young pros um today uh or just, just doing the little things and it, it it keeps you on your toes keeps you, you said grateful because when you get into that elite environment you know you've then earned it and then Said one of the young pros is cleaning your boots. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely think there's still uh, there's still a place in the game for it. I, I think it's a it's maybe been been eradicated a bit too much now. Um, I can understand why in certain cases certain practices aren't the same anymore, um, and that's to do with sort of, like I said, health and safety with the kids, uh, and that's that's fair enough. But there's definitely uh, 
definitely, I think academies maybe pander too much uh, to some of the young kids coming through now. Yeah, and um, so there's a point then, and I sort of, I'm going to look at sort of your record. There's the point then, obviously, mate, when you're in this sort of what you call youth and sort of not made sort of professionally in terms of what you are doing now, playing regularly, and between that. And so, you, like I said, you had a, a loan spell at Brentford, if I'm correct, but not really played. So, no, yeah, I think I went there, I was injured at the time. Um, and I needed to just get back to some out of the uh, get out of the bit of the bubble at Arsenal really, uh, and I went there for a month. And actually, it was as I said it's a great club, uh, Brentford. Uh, no surprise how they're doing now. Uh, that was kind of the the foundations were there when I was there. You could see it was a club heading in the right direction. I think they're in League One or League Two at the time, uh, but you knew within a few years they'd be pushing towards Premier League football. Yeah, it was plain to see. Um, like I say, you didn't get to play much, but that was just sort of go there for a month and sort of see what it's about and get some taste of experience, even if it's not hmm. 90 minutes on a yeah. pitch. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, don't get me wrong, the, the main aim is to go and play games, but um, any experience is a good experience. Uh, you get you get a feel for said what it's like um, elsewhere. Yeah, not every environment's the same, especially... I places like I said, like clubs like Arsenal, they are unique because there's very few teams in the world that at the time would have been like that uh, in terms of the environment. So you have to, re- realistically, it's a very small chance, percentage-wise, that you're ever going to stay at that club for mm-hmm. years and years. So you need to, it, it's always good to sort of go outside of your comfort zone and see what else there is. Mm. I mean, you had a spell at Nottingham Forest, but again, sort of not, what we call first team football now, but I think you had, what was it? So have a look here. One 14 minutes against sort of Brighton, which I mean, I guess you sort of take that even just one one experience of it. I think I think it gets said a lot that even if you never played pro football again, just having one game is sort of it, even if it's only 14 minutes. Yeah, yeah. No, I was in and around the squads. Um... You, you see it, you're in like a first team environment uh, in the championship. It's very competitive league. It still is now. Um, and you kind of understand there what kind of football is really like. Um, in the EFL, I think it's very much like what you're going to experience at most uh, most clubs. I said at like Arsenal, it's, it's Champions League level football, so it's different. Um, very, It's very much different. But uh, at Nottingham Forest, I think it's where I kind of learnt, really. i become more of a rounded footballer um, just through my experiences, um, playing with the players that I played with in the, in the first team and seeing different managers, different st- styles of play. Uh, I definitely, It was a, definitely a good part of my education, almost like a finishing school, if anything, mm. where you really do see what football is about in, in England, to be honest, mm. yeah. And you had some uh, loan spells, one of them non-eaten in a National League. So that, again, even if it wasn't for long, I'm just look, eight games, that's still compared to youth football or just one game here to get some sort of run of, like, this is professional football. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, it was good. Um, again, another eye-opener. I think first day you're sort of meeting the coach, uh, Halfway on the motorway, sort of last-minute pickup, and then you're being you're being thrown into a game in the National League, which is, he said, back then, same as it is now, really tough, tough league, relentless league. Um, a team like Nuneaton, but it was really good. Uh, great bunch of lads there. Good, uh, said good manager that just gave me some first-team football. To, uh, it was it was for like what two months. Uh, got some games in and really enjoyed it. I think I think one thing that you can, especially when you're a young player, in 19, 18, 19, and you're looking for that exposure of first team football, there's nothing like uh, playing on a Saturday at three, three o'clock. It's that mm. feeling, um, the build up to it. Uh, I said most of the academy games now, I don't know when they're played, but a lot of them were like Tuesday nights or sort of a, a Monday afternoon. It's just not the same. Saturday, three o'clock, 
you've got all the games going on at the same time and it was yeah it's it's great yeah, I really enjoyed that um so that first real kind of run of games within a first team environment yeah and it's sad to see what's happened to them as like quite a few other clubs have problems and I think they've uh sort of financial and not National League anymore like they were at the time I don't know what they are now um, you know drop down leagues and stuff like that which I guess is never to see f- never nice to see for any club but for your f- former club as well it's, you know it's, it's not nice to see um, but you also had a spell at Torquay and if I'm right you came in uh, to them in a relegation battle when they were in a relegation battle they managed to stay up during your spell now I'm not, I could flatter you and sort of say that was down to you, but what, what reasons were that then from, you know, from your spell going in there from, from what you saw? Yeah, well, I went in there and I think we were rock bottom of the league. I think we were 12 points from safety, so we were a long, long way off. Um, but I'll be honest, we were, I went in there and within the first two, three training sessions, I could see that we had some really good players. And that just you, the question was, how the, how the heck are these players uh bottom of this league mm. because yeah we had a we had a really good team and to be fair to the manager Kevin Nicholson he's a really good guy um brought me in um yeah brought me in brought in a couple of others and it kind of just solidified um the team uh, we got like I said the good run going um yeah, it was. It, it, it wasn't really much that changed. It wasn't like a style of football or anything. I just think he just got the, the players that were there. They were good players and just got them playing. Had a little system, got us working hard, and we just went on a good run. I think our form was near the top of the league, and then we got we kind of got out of relegation with games to spare. So everyone looked at it in the sense of like, oh, must have sort of uh, reinvented the wheel to get that team going again. But it really wasn't. I mean, you look at some of the players now, like you got Dan Butler. He's at Peterborough. Angus McDonald's, I think, still playing in the championship. Nathan Smith, captain of Port Vale. He had some, he had some really top players. Mm. So, yeah, it was it was just one of those. It was a bit of a mad one, but uh, yeah, very good. So, do you think just one of them where you've got some of these players, perhaps some younger ones who are sort of have good potential? That's just a case of them that throughout that season they slowly gelled and improved, and then bang, you went on that good run. Um, with help for yourself, obviously, and then managed to survive. And then they've gone on and, like you said, done, d- done well playing championship, sort of league one, whatever. Now, yeah, I think you find that in, in especially in non-league, there's always talent knocking about. It's just getting the best out of it and forming a, a squad of some sort. It's, uh, but yeah, like I said, I come in the first week and I thought, well, I, I, you're expecting the worst because you look at the, the league table, but. I, Said the standard of training was good, and some of the players enough when sort of you question it. But um, once I don't know whether it was a lack of confidence or what had happened over the season, whether there had been injuries. I think I came in about January, February. And yeah, we just said once we got the first win, um, just results, and just kept just thought we just kept on winning. And then we were going wrong, we lost the odd, lost the odd game. But um, yeah, we were, I said, we, I think we, we, uh, we survived with maybe two two games to go in the end quite comfortably, which considering the position where I come, when I came in where we were it was uh, yeah one of the one of the biggest achievements of my career really if you look at it statistically but like I said it wasn't a it was a don't get me wrong it was a big achievement we felt relieved but you look back at it now and you think it's, it's no shock really that we did with the team that we we had it was a it was a, it was a great team really good team yeah and then you went to Chelmsford City. So a lot, <laughs> yeah. lot, lot, lot of suburban teams here. That's quite a trend, obviously, people staying around your area. I think I've got a question about that later, but Chelmsford City in National League uh, South at the time, I remember right, qualifying for the playoffs at the end of that season. So drop down, obviously, from National League, but I imagine that still, I imagine that would be, even though it's a drop down, like I said, it would still be better, um, like I said, to get into the playoffs and pushing up and winning most weeks if you're getting yeah. near, near top of the table compared to, you know, perhaps uh, being mid-table or what have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, to be fair, the Chelmsford um, saga, in terms of when I signed, I was, I was due to sign at Blackpool. So that I thought that was going to go through. And then for whatever reason, it didn't. 
Um, I said I, uh, Gary Bowie was keen to sign me, and then it didn't happen, and it kind of scuppered my sort of my plans over the, mm. the summer. And I was in a bit of a situation where time was ticking towards the season, and I kind of wanted you want to be playing, and like, Chelmsford's not far from where I'm from, about 20 minutes. Uh, got a call. Um, from the manager Rod Stringer uh, and yeah just went over there didn't really expect much just wanted to stay fit and then after four or five games just uh, started to really enjoy it um, had a, again had a very good team um, great management team uh, did really well that season and uh, in terms of the league like you say winning most weeks uh, part of a really good team part of a really good dressing room one of the best I've been part of like, great characters uh, and good, really good players and yeah we just kept on going and the biggest one of the biggest disappointments is that we didn't get promoted uh, mm. we lost in the final to Ebbsfleet um, in really like difficult circumstances where they, they mm. kind of scored two goals in what, the last 50 minutes of the game um, and until that point we were quite comfortable and then we were a man down as well um, but yeah really good uh, again I'd recommend to any sort of player don't look down. I said National League South um, is a tough, tough level. I, uh, anyone that comes out there with a promotion or plays like 50 games does well in in that league. I've got massive respect for because I know it, again it's a it's a tough league. It really is a tough league. You said there, you know, you, you tell players not to look down on it. Um, obviously, what's it like? So you said you were due to sign for Blackpool, and I think they were League Two at the time. Mm, yeah. And, so to have that fall through and then right, I've got to go to Chelmsford, that's two leagues below. Does that affect you where you sort of, there was that, oh, you know, I should, it should be at Blackpool if, you know, if things have gone your way and that does, how, how would you get that out of your system? Because I imagine having that constantly over you, should be at Blackpool, should be at Blackpool. How would you get that out of you? Because it, it can't be good. Yeah, I think naturally for anyone to be, or be, would be disappointed with, look, at the end of the day, uh, no disrespect to Chelmsford, but compared to Blackpool, they, they were they're in the Premier League sort mm. of a few years previously, a massive club in the country mm. historically. But uh, it's one of those. It's sort of you got to get uh, back on your bike and just do what you do what you can. Uh, mm. And once, like I said, once the first few weeks were difficult because it's again it's adapting to a different style of football. It's uh, it's difficult mentally to sort of get your head around it, but then once you're playing and you're winning and you start to enjoy it, I think that's what I say to most players now, young players coming through. It's, it's, you've got to still have the enjoyment for it. Uh, at some point, not all footballers enjoy it. Um, some enjoy it more than others, but they, they they must enjoy it to a point where they're willing to get up every day and uh, put the hard yards in. Um, so... Yeah, by the said by it got to sort of the Christmas time, we were flying, doing really well, and you just enjoying your football again. Doesn't matter what level you're playing at. Uh, I, I knew I could kick back. I knew I could kick on. I knew I, if I did well, I could. I'm still young, 22, 23. If I had a good season, uh, I'd kick on again. Then said I had a good team around me, um, some really good players uh, who who were in the same boat. To be honest, there was a, that, that was a great thing about that squad that year. It was a good. Experience good experience of the league but also you had about five six players that could probably play a level two levels above um and were hungry had something to prove uh, mm. and I was one of them so it was yeah really I had a really enjoyable season like you said and I, uh, this is uh, quite a few of the guys we've had on before have said this is that around that sort of league two uh, National League and then National League even regional ones north and south you do get some of these players where this lad you know he's so good he could be playing League 2 and that type of thing where it's a, the leagues are quite close why do you think that doesn't happen that you sort of say well this lad he's so good he should be playing League 2 and like I said it, it seems a bit strange that and obviously the tactics and sort of managers will have different prefaces that a League 2 team wanted you and I think they were newly relegated to League Two, so they should have been one of the better ones in League Two that wanted you. So then, you know, why would it be then that perhaps a lower League Two team didn't want you or another National League team 
Do, do, do you know what I mean? Do you get that, that yeah. point where you get this sort of thing with how the, it doesn't always work out how you, you would think it would work? Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Like, lo- so you think it would work logically that people just said you hit like a, maybe a branch on the way down. But mm. uh, it's, I think with football, and I, I think most fans realise with football, that how I've seen it is the top, top players, the top, top talents will more often than not make it in and around the mm. top. But other than that, everyone's pretty good. But a lot of it's down to opinions, bit of luck. Um, and I've seen some real good players I've played with at lower levels and think, how are you not playing any higher? And they, don't get me wrong, a lot of them do mm. eventually find that level. But it will be maybe an injury, maybe sort of a manager, or they weren't seen at the right, but weren't in the right time at the right place. And I think mm. yeah, a lot of that is... Uh, a lot of that's prevalent within the, especially the lower leagues, because it's look at the end of the day, it's a, it's a proper competitive environment. You've got X amount of places in a squad, not very much, and thousands of players. So, and a lot of the players, certain managers want players that they can trust. So they might be the same players coming around to the same clubs. Uh, when there's waiting in the wings, there's a young up and coming player who may be more talented, may have more about them. But because said manager wants a player that you know, and that's just how that's how it works. But you, as a footballer, you know that, and you've got to just work even harder. Uh, and when you do get the opportunity, whether it be Championship, League One, League Two, or the, in in non-league, you've got to take that opportunity when you can. Mm. Uh, yeah. And then you got your move to Bromley, where we well, you scored a few goals at Chelmsford, but Bromley, I can see you absolutely fired them in. What do you think? Mm. I mean, those numbers, you know, they look like something like a striker would do um, and stuff. So, what do you think sort of happened there then? That the reason for that sort of such a prolific season? Uh, to be fair, I've always been capable of scoring goals wherever I've been. Um, I think at Chelmsford, the way I was sort of, well, the way I played was maybe a bit more, uh, more of kind of a, I'd so say box to box, but I probably did more winning of the ball and play and passing, and because we had a lot of good strikers, so the, the reliance would be on them to get the goals. Um, while at Bromley, I think we had maybe goals more around the pitch rather than focused mm. up front. And I've always been good at getting forward, and I think I just played in a system where I was given a bit of freedom. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't absolved of any defensive duties. I, I didn't just stand in the box all the time. I had to put the work in, but I knew that there was a, probably more of a responsibility of, for me to get goals. So, yeah, um, was given a given a platform to do it, and and yeah, I think once a couple once a couple flew flew in, you kind of just get the knack of it really after a while, and. Uh, we had a good season um, in terms of play, did well in the, well it did well in the league. Probably could have done a little bit better, and obviously got to the trophy final as well. So we had a good run in that. So there was plenty of games to score, and uh, yeah, just had a good team around us as well. Again, good team that uh, I think everyone kind of played to their their strengths, and we did well. Yeah. Where do you think that come from? That it seems like to me that you've you're saying like all right, Bromley, you were the system suits you, so you scored a few more goals, but Chelmsford, it was a bit more different. Where do you think that came from then, that 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 sort of talent, if you like, of being a bit more versatile? I think it's just from my education as a footballer, I think I've always been like that. I think, I think good footballers can play in different positions and different uh, styles. I think a lot, a lot of um, players now get typecast in terms of Oh, he's a holding midfielder. He's an attacking midfielder. Yes, and I agree to a point. There's some players that do better than others, but some of the best players I've played with can do either, like could do either if they wanted to, um, because they're just good footballers. You put them at right back, they could play right back. You put you mm. put them right wing, they might not be as good as the best right winger, but they can play in that position. Just and they can they can get by because they're a good footballer. And with me, it just look, I'm I'm one of those players that if manager gives me an instruction, gives me a job, I'll just do that job because I know it will get the team results. And I think at Chelmsford, I, I think I scored like eight or nine goals. So it wasn't a bad return, but I knew that 
in order to win games every week, I had to do my job in order to maybe supply the strikers who their job was to score and then it worked. And Bromley, I think my job was more offensively to get goals because we didn't have a prolific striker, so to speak. Where we got most of our goals was in sort of that kind of midfield area behind the, the strikers. I think mm. we got had a few players that chipped in with, with goals and once I knew my role, it's like like any professional, I think you, you try and carry it out to the best of your ability. And you had a bit of an FA Cup run against Rochdale. I think that was that their season. I think that would have been, would that have been the season they played Tottenham? I don't know. It might have been, yeah, might have been the I season. It was. Was the season. But I think it was lost... the season they had to relay, relay the pitch, didn't they? Because yeah. they Spurs paid for it. Yeah. There was a lot of controversy about that, about how that affected them in, in the league and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, and you lost sort of 4 0 in that game, but I guess still playing in, uh, well, for where they were League One at the time, not a big stadium for Rochdale, not a sort of big one, but for you, would it be sort of pretty cool to sort of try yourself against a League One team and then sort of, for, for what is you, a big stadium? Yeah, yeah, good. Always good. I've said I played there a couple of times. It's a, it's a good place to play football. And um, to be fair to them, they, they were very good. Um, I think Rochdale were renowned within the EFL that they try and play good football not always mm. like up there in League One I think they do well to stay within the league maybe with budgets and stuff but they mm. to be fair to them they always try and play and I think they were very good and it was a bit of an eye opener really just they said the quality uh, I think the lad Henderson played uh, and he was very good um, you can see I think he's he, he's, a, he's a prolific scorer within the EFL so you see, you see the difference. You get punished at those levels a lot more than you possibly did at national league level for mistakes. But uh, it gives you it gives you inspiration. That's what you that's what you want to reach for. That's the level you want to be at. Yeah. And you said inspiration level you want to be at. Then got you moved to League One, not up north, <laughs> Rochdale way, but not far from you, I guess, sort of look near London area, uh, Chillingham. <laughs> yeah. So for you then, you've made you've. You'd uh, well, play one game, championship, but this is your sort of point now, okay, the League One, you, you've made your step up and you, you're going to want to take any sort of chance you're going to want to get in League One because you don't know when it's going to come around again. Yeah, definitely. I um, said so I had a few sort of options, but I said Gillingham, they were, they were probably the most keen, actually. That's why that's the manager was the one that was most keen to sign me, so... It made it made more sense when you've got a manager that's kind of really wanting you to come to the club, um, uh, and he said it's a good, Jelen's a good club. Like you, I know said about them, they're not too, they weren't too far from where I was based. Um, there wasn't massive upheaval. Uh, League One was a chance to test myself uh, in that in that level. He it said it's a jump of two divisions, but. You're playing against teams like Sunderland, uh, Portsmouth. Like that's kind of the selling point, really, isn't it? Um, when you're up against those teams, being able to challenge yourself uh, against those massive clubs that's, like Sunderland, we were in the Premier League like two years previously. Or, that's uh, that was the big selling point for me, and yeah, and no, I just couldn't wait to to get there and get started. And I think there would have been a certain Tom Eaves there at the time. Who, yeah, think, that would have been. He had two seasons there. He had one where he scored a few, and then he had another where he scored absolute loads. Uh, so playing with him and seeing where he's gone now with all, what mm. was it like to sort of be involved with him? Yeah, he's, he's, he's a, first and foremost, he's a great lad, like really, really good guy. Um, obviously, I knew that he'd scored a few goals the season before. Um, so he, he was, we all kind of said he was going to be our talisman up front. Um, and yeah, he didn't disappoint uh, really. I, I think that year, what he showed was he was just clinical. Um, I think he would be the first to admit for 85 minutes of, the, of many games, he probably didn't offer loads and his all-round all game maybe could have improved. But when he was in front of goal, he, he was deadly. Uh, he was clinical. And uh, yeah, he was a he was massive part uh, of our season. Um, he scored some great goals as well. The one at Portsmouth. Um, was one I've always remember, one of the best goals I've seen uh, live. Brilliant, brilliant goal. Um, and now he, he said he, he was 
he was the one that we we knew if we worked hard and we got balls into the box um, more often than not he'd put them away. Uh, and he yeah, said that he deserved his move. Um, I, I was really glad for him. Um, moved to a big club like Hull. Obviously, they got relegated uh, mm. the year in the champ. Which, uh, but I think they'll go again. It's a it's a big club, and uh, he'll he'll bang in even even more goals. He's a he's a natural finisher, a great player. And you had another FA Cup run with Jill's, uh, the, the Cardiff game, which I, I remember my mate, Jill, he's a Gillingham fan, he was tweeted about that. And that was late goal, if I remember, 85th minute, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah. Late yeah. on, wasn't it? You were involved in that one, but you were involved in the next game against Swansea. Mm. And that's one yeah. where we got one of our Twitter questions was scoring. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, FA Cup in general, um, don't know what about the genera- the the young generation these days probably is, but for me it was still a big thing growing up FA Cup. So it was it's a it's an honour to play, uh, and especially you get to sort of like the fourth round against again a team like Swansea who great support, good as I said Liberty, great stadium, um, and they were they were a good team. I, like they played some great football, but. Um, yeah, he managed to get my goal. And to be fair, that game, I think the scoreline didn't really, I've, I've spoken about this with a few people, scoreline ended up 4-1, but it didn't really reflect a lot of the game, to be honest. Mm. There was a time when we got our goal, we were really piling the pressure. And I think we missed a couple of chances. You put them away and then you're thinking, cool, are we doing it again? Obviously, the Card- Cardiff knocked out Premier League opposition. You think, well, we do it in Swansea as well. But I think we, in the end, you get punished by them teams. I think they scored, they scored goal from about 30 yards out and you should think that's that mm. is the difference any any you give them an inch and they 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 will punish you uh and that was a lesson in itself but no it was a great experience and uh yeah great to score always great to score a goal would you say scoring then would that would you say that's probably the best moment of your career or one of the best one of the best uh, to be fair the goal I scored previously uh in the league game against Burton to win the game was probably the best moment um because that was a great game. Um, I remember, uh, I think we played, we beat Burton early on in the season and we, we were really good. But when we played them at um, the Pirelli, I'll be honest, we, we were really under the cosh. I think we, I think we went 2-0 or 2-1 up, um, but they were they were good. They were all over us. And uh, I think the manager threw me on, just said, look, solid, <laughs> kind of... Come in, extra legs in the field, just make sure we get a point. And uh, yeah, managed to, to play a ball through, uh, get forward and score the score the winner right at the end. Uh, I remember celebrating with the fans, a like, like, brilliant moment and come away with a massive, I think at the time it was a big three points. We needed a win because we'd gone on a little bit of a, we, we, a little bit of a stale run. Uh, and that was, that was, yeah, that was one, that's probably my best moment at Jill's. I just remember the fans are going, we're going, Crazy, obviously, mm. big away day. Um, we'd come in and wasn't really a smash and grab as such, but it was like one of those where you take a point but end up coming coming away with three. Uh, massive. Yeah, that season in general. Then, so looking at sort of your numbers for the whole season, eighteen games, and I think from looking at sort of the games you played, obviously, it's one of them where you, you got a spell, didn't get a spell, got a spell, sort of mm. on and off. So I guess one half of years, like you, absolutely buzzing that you're getting some. Like, League One experience, but other half is you sort of like you want to you want to play every game, of course. Frustrating. Yeah, yeah no, at times it was definitely. Um, it, look, any footballer would be lying if they didn't want to play. But I think it was one of those where I'd signed and I thought, look, I'm, I want to come in and hit the ground running. But I, I think realistically, you have to take your time. The league, League One. I think League Two and the National League are quite similar in a way. I think the top end of League Two, I think the teams are more akin to League One teams. Mm. But League One is definitely different in terms of it's quicker and you have to be a lot sharper with uh, how you think about the game. I think the National League is a bit more of a fight most weeks. Uh, you have to be prepared for a battle while League One's a bit more of a chess game. So it took me a while. I, I got an injury in pre-season that didn't help. And then it took me a while to kind of get to the pace, uh, or find my position within the team. But it got to around Christmas time when I had a good run in the team and I was playing well. Uh, and that, that was around the time I said I was scoring, um, doing good. And yeah, I was enjoying it. Look, it's, it was good. So I said, you play these teams that you, 
the Sunderlands, your, Lut- your Lutons, uh, getting 10,000 10, plus down at Barnsley and Kenilworth Road. It was uh, it was good. We had a, it said the season was up and down, but I think you look on the whole, we did we did well as a squad. I think where we finished, um, we did we did well considering. I think pro- most most bookies probably would have had us down there um, in the scrap. And I think that year, that year it was. Uh, I think the six teams in the playoffs were miles ahead of everyone else. But then mm. the other eight, the other eighteen teams, it was a pretty much a what you call a big relegation fight, if anything. But um, every, anyone could have beaten in, anyone uh, mm. in that league. That was good. Then you left Joe and go because it uh, changed manager. I think I remember correctly just just before the end of a season. Uh, mm. Yeah, and then, and then new manager came in, and just just a case of manager with different preferences, sort of tactical wise, and preferring different players. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. I think it was oh, you'd be hard done by if it was just you. But I think that was I think that was a mass exodus. Really, a lot of players went, and it was just one of those in football. You, it happens to everyone. Um, I, I had still a year left. But I, to be fair to Steve Evans, he came in and made his plans clear, and I knew that was probably my time. Uh, so it's about kind of being professional, preparing yourself for your next challenge, wherever that may be. Um, and I was accepting of that. Um, ideally, would have wanted to stay because I said I it said my first season was a learning curve, but I enjoyed it and I enjoyed playing for the club. But um, you've got to do what's kind of best for best for you. Uh, yeah, no, I was just just one of those you, you kind of. I think I wouldn't be the first person to uh, to moan about it. Or you've got to take it on the chin. Yeah, yeah. but went back to Bromley, and I, you know, if you you need to do something, go to where it's worked before. So back to Bromley, and mm. that's obviously what you did um, last season. Um, so again, again, what well, reasoning? I imagine your reasoning would have just been. Go back to how it works then. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, a bit, a bit, again, at the end of the day, I think it got, got towards the beginning of the season. I was still deals; nothing had really been sorted, and look, it was it was it was an easy transition, really. To be honest, like you said, it's not sort of the way it worked, but obviously, you don't know need no introduction to the club. You can go in and. Again, it's just about wanting to play, and that's where I just wanted to play football. I didn't want to sit around do nothing or go somewhere where you kind of in in and out and you, you just want to be playing playing your football uh, so yeah no it was I, I knew the manager was still there it was it was one of those it was just yeah easy and an, an easy one didn't need to any time just wanted to go, jump straight in and uh, yeah and and, and also the to got some good players there from mm. The time I've been there before, uh, the squad was looking really strong. Uh, I wanted to go somewhere where we'd have a chance of fighting at the top end of the league. Didn't just want to go somewhere where you're going to play and have that mid-table or being in uh, in a in a dogfight. You want to be fighting at the top end. Yeah, and then obviously season interrupted because of the, the government and sort of um, things went things went wrong to put put it to put it lightly. Yeah. But yes. I mean, I think yeah, let's have a, a look. So there's quite a lot of things with the points per game and sort of. So I'm just double checking. Thirteenth, which uh, sort of mid-table type of thing. Which listen, there are a few clubs who they got really screwed over with some of this, and you know, I've got a lot of opinions on what should have happened, what you know should have been yeah. put in place. But you know, you had some clubs who they'd won every almost every single game and were already promoted, and they and it turned around and said, "No, nope, you're not going up." And also some who had about five points who had already been relegated weeks ago and it said you get to be saved. But that experience then is something that I don't think any footballer in this generation has ever experienced. The last time anything like it would have happened would have been 1939 and that, that was only about five games in. So mm. I'm, genuinely, I, I don't know if this has ever happened before where a whole season has been called off like that uh, when you're about yeah. 75% the way in what was like that like then um no and you had about 10 games left and you could have perhaps mathematically could have still been in shout with the playoffs although not you would have said favorites perhaps and lots of games in hand but what was that like then to sort of for the you know for, for that whole situation when everything got shut down 
No, it was difficult. I'll be honest, that last season, we massively underachieved. We were top of the league, I think, until kind of November, December. So we were flying and we had a few things that derailed us a little bit in terms of uh, some injuries to some key players. Uh, and then it was just kind of, it was massively, we were massively inconsistent. And then when the turn of the new year, we just couldn't buy a win. Um, down to multiple things, I think. Players not performing. I think we didn't really settle on a system. I think we'd, we'd won games beginning of the season, got a great start. Um, don't We'd won games, but we weren't playing particularly well. Mm. But we managed to grind out results. And I think we tried to do that throughout the whole season. I think, I think obviously, uh, you can't do it for a whole season. There needs to be a time where you kind of, you've got a team that's got kind of a a way of playing a style of football that's going to win football games. I think you can't, it's impossible to grind out 46 uh, one nils in a season. Um, and we were doing it some games and then other games we were losing. And then we'd had a bit of a, said a bad run and it got to a point where you just couldn't win a game. It, we were playing teams, getting loads of chances, battering teams in terms of possession territory and we'd end up losing one nil. And you just think to yourself, God, is there any chance we're going to win? And I think we played Harrogate. The the last game we played before the shutdown was Harrogate and we managed to get a draw away. And you're thinking, right, good, back in the playoff hunt now where we should mm. be really. I think we, sh- we should have been easy in the playoffs if we'd have sort of achieved our potential, so to speak. Uh, and then, um, yeah, obviously the shutdown. So, like you said, what can you, what can you do? Um, mm. Was it the right thing? Yes, because games were getting cold off um, uh, due to the pandemic. Um, but it's a difficult one, yeah. But was, yeah. The, was the point of the game fair? No, but it, most of the season had been played, weren't, so mm. it had been a difficult one for the teams like your Barrows and your Harrogates that were all in the, that were right up there. No, you can't please everyone in those situations mm. at the end of the day. Um, but... Um, yeah, no, it was it was it was hard. It was a bit of a at first it was like, okay, what do we do now? Actually it's quite nice to have just a break from everything, the relentlessness, and then after about a month you're bored again. So yeah, it was difficult. Yeah, like you said, hopefully the rules and what was right, what was wrong, hopefully uh, the EFL, the FA, all the organizations sort of say, right, this incident's happened. Something like this happens again where the government comes along and says you've got to shut down or a natural disaster happens something or anything like that, where they get some rules together, clearly lined out beforehand, so it sort of says, right, this, if this happens, call no and void or we do this or do that, just so then there's no sort of argument at the time. I think some of the leagues like voting on what they should do. The problem with that is the teams near the bottom are going to vote for null and void or anything that keeps them. The teams near the middle aren't really going to care, and the teams near the top are going to want whatever, you know, whatever's best for them. So then you get this situation where, you know, this sort of clubs are not voting on what is the, for the best interests of sort of the integrity of the competition. They're voting on their own yeah. thing, which you can't really blame them for because, and it's always tough for football clubs with money you, that that relegation yes. could put them on a downward downward spiral. We've seen it before where they get two or three relegations and it kills the club completely compared to you know if you're going to change one moment them surviving relegation you know two different timelines completely different but that's something that I mean hopefully gets sorted out and they, they draw up a plan but I'm not 100% confident they'll do that um, and then Bromley uh, you left them for older shots so another southern team down yeah. south yeah you must think I've got something against the north I don't it's just it's just where yeah, it's just where I've happened to uh, play my football, really. But uh, yeah, I mean, the summer was difficult in many ways because of the uh, obscurity of what was going on. I don't think not only did the players know what was going on, I don't think the clubs knew what was going on. So it got to a point where uh, I was still under kind of contract at Bromley. I actually thought I was probably going to stay, but. Nothing was guaranteed, and to be fair to the manager Neil Smith, he was honest with me and just said, "Look, I'm talking to you as a from a person, a friend point of view. We don't know what's going on, and it's you kind of you want to keep playing. I I, I take 
I'd take any other offers that you get seriously because it's going to be a difficult um, summer for a lot of players because mm. squads are going to get thinner. Clubs don't know how much money they've got, especially in the lower leagues, um, and what playing budget is going to be like, What they whether they'll even be in existence, some of them. Mm. Uh, and so then, yeah, um, all the shot. Uh, I'd been in, to have been in contact. They're a big club in the league. Um, been a league club previously. I've played there before, so I knew the club fairly well from playing at them. And then it's just a matter of speaking to the manager really, and had a couple of really good chats with him. Um, kind of similar ideas about football. Um, liked what I heard, and it, and yeah, in the end, it was. Yeah, yeah, I said it's a difficult time. There's a lot of really good players at the moment, either out of contract or struggling to get a club. Uh, mm. And I just wanted to make sure I was able, was able to still play football because I've been in that position before. There's nothing worse than uh, being that free agent and looking for kind of what are you next and be playing football. That uncertainty because it's bad enough in normal times, but in amidst of a sort of a global pandemic uh, where everything's uncertain. Um, the one thing you want to try and fix up is uh, yeah, your career. So, yeah. And uh, there's a certain Ross McCormack who's come and I remember to the club. I remember seeing that. I was like, I'm sure I've got the right guy because I thought that's a bit of a strange move. Yeah. I know there was a lot, I think he was in Australia for a bit or something. I saw the no same for us like, as well. So. <laughs> yeah. We weren't quite sure if it was the Ross McCormack or not. Mm. So, I yeah. was like that. Um, so I came in a few weeks afterwards, sort of everything um, would normally have got quite a few mid September, was it, or something like that? And he's, I think he's already played a few games here and there. Um, I was amazed to be seen where how long will play. Uh, you know, sometimes I don't want to sort of, I'm not having a go at him, but sometimes you get the older players where they're not able to play every single game, you know, uh, and stuff like that. But for you, a player with that experience and you know, that sort of uh, knowledge and ability to sort of be within the training uh, with him and sort of playing with him in if and when possible what must be sort of good for you and benefiting you, even if you're not exactly the same type of player. Yeah, one thing I can say about Ross, he's been different class since he's uh, come in. I think for someone of his calibre, he's the top scorer in the championship of all time. So you've got someone who's played at some elite clubs a fantastic footballer I've seen him play over the years but he's come in with no chip on his shoulder nothing in fact it's the complete opposite he's like again his main aim was is to get back fit and playing and uh, he's, he's played a couple of games but he's still getting there and you can see it you can see he's, he's got so much quality it's just kind of the, the fitness levels and getting up to the pace of the game but he's come in and that you just listen to everything he says because you know he's played at that level and mm. he's been the breath of fresh air actually for uh, the building. I think he's been good for the manager as well because you get a bit of a more of an experienced head in the dressing room. He maybe sees things. Uh, he brings that elite mentality. Um, and yeah, he's, he's settled in really well. Um, our main aim now is just to get him fit uh, and firing because... Look, you see it in training. He does some things, and you think oh, you don't get that at national league level um, too often. Um, I said it's a tough, it's a tough league, and a lot of teams cancel each other out. But more often than not, you rely on those players with that bit of X factor, that quality, to win your games. And he's got that in abundance. So um, no, it, but like I said, first and foremost, he's been different class. Actually, really, really good. Um, just good to, again. Some of the snippets you get from him, whether it and he he won't he won't do it. One of those players that oh I've done this and I've done that. He he says it because it, and all the boys you can just see have that keen interest. Like oh, what was it like there? And you get and like I said, I I love football, so I, I enjoy hearing those sort of those those times where he's played in those big games for those big clubs, and you think oh yeah, well, no, that's and you take just any. So take the one percent from what you said, and you can improve yourself as a player. Does that lift the squad then? When that type of name, because everyone would have heard of him, and perhaps mm. no disrespect to some other players, but it's like you might have 
have other times a new lad come in, who's this guy? I've not heard of him at all. One of the lad, you know, a few lads have heard of him. I've oh, played with him before. He's been, but this is one of the things where everyone's heard of him. They know his reputation. Does that lift the squad and, and give you a bit of a boost? I think it lifts the club in general um, because you, you think to yourself, in a weird way, you think this guy has played for Villa, Leeds, uh, Cardiff, Fulham top teams and he comes into the building and you think I've got to impress this guy but as weird as it sounds he's like your teammate and you think God, oh, like I think most people's attitude especially the young players would be like I've got to show this guy what I'm about sort of thing so and then the staff because they want to make the environment similar to the environment he's come from like the, they lift their game so they're so like training's more intense. Uh, it's a it's a weird one. I said, I think a lot of people look down on it as uh, I think you said it. I think fans, some fans look at it unless it's not your club. Oh, he's just coming in here to start. I said like, and but you you don't see behind the scenes. It gives a lift within the changing room uh, to the other boys as well. And then on the pitch, that obviously that's where we want to see. So if if he brings half of what you can bring, you'll make a difference in uh, in the games in our league because just uh, that's just the level of footballer he is. Mm. I guess we get what you said there about some of the, the fans and reactions. Listen, I support a team, and sometimes you get it where you get a player coming who's been a top player, and you sort of half want to get excited about it because oh, he's played in the Premier League or something like that. But then half he's like he's this age or whatever, and you know that you are sort of half with, well there's a reason he's not, he's playing here and he's not playing a league above or two leagues above. And, so I think, and it remains mm. to be seen how we'll, how we'll do because it could be very well that he gets fit and bags 10 or whatever. It could also be that he never gets fit, it doesn't work for him and then, you, you know, you know, it could go either way. And I think that sort of divide amongst fans is that some fans will say, well, yeah, he's a top player but we've had these types of players before and it's not worked out but also sometimes where you've had them before and they have worked out so it's just, you know, time will tell type of thing. I imagine, yeah. and um, well, time will tell. We this season, providing obviously you're allowed to finish it, and you know that depart depends on what the rules are really. Um, and it's been a bit of a weird start because I think, I think, usually you have games called off and stuff like that. But usually it's a winter thing where they all get called yeah. off at once or something. But we've had stuff now where some teams have played five games, some six, some seven. So the league table, let's have a look, eleventh. But I'm not going to say that because. It's not really fair to compare at this little stage because you've all played different amount. Yeah. So for where you are, sort of looking for this season, providing obviously you can finish it or just finish something, you know, uh, you know, even complete ninety percent of it. What do you think is sort of a realistic sort of aim for this season? Again, difficult. It's a difficult question with the season. I mean, you look at the start we've had. I think we've played. I think you look at the teams we've played. Um, I think we played six games. Um, three of three or four of them are in the top six now. So we've had a tough start. Mm. But you look at the games that we've lost, and we should be we should have got points from them. Um, Hartlepool, we should have got a point. Sutton, we should have got a point. Uh, Torquay, we had a bit of a capitulation in the second half, but and then Eastleigh, we should we should have won. So you're thinking we're well, seven points now, but it really probably should be close to ten, eleven. And then that puts you in the top seven, I think, mm. if you within the playoffs. So I think I, don't, I think this league's going to be a mad league this year. I think it's going to come down to a lot of things. It's going to come down to squad management, definitely. I think the teams with the bigger squads and how they manage the squads will have a, an advantage because it, there's going to be months like a December where you're going to get seven games in a month, and rotation may be key. And I think, like every year in the National League, consistency is huge. Um, not so much quality. And like I said, the teams do need, the, the top teams do need that quality, but it's those that can maybe put in the seven out of tens every week and just get the points on the board. And, and again, that'll be a big thing, getting points on the board, because there's going to be teams with about eight games in hand, the way it's going at the moment. But I think I'd rather have the points on the board, whether it goes to a PPG. I don't know, but you look at sort of a Torquay now, they're in a really strong position because I think they're six points clear. I think Stockport have, uh, have 
got COVID in the camp, so they're mm-hmm. not going to be able to play. And the Torquay win their next couple of games, uh, they've already built that gap. Um, so I think it's going to be massive uh, in terms of this. For us, I think anything's possible, personally. Um, I think if we play like we did against Notts County, uh, most weeks, you're looking top half playoff. But well, we need to, that's down to us to be consistent enough, uh, keeping our, to keeping fit, to managing the squad. Um, but I could say that about most teams in the league, personally. Mm. So it's going to be a tough one to call this year. I wouldn't want to be uh, anyone predicting it because I think it, it, there'll be a lot of surprises. Yeah. I'm a bit of a sort of league table hawk every single game, checking it, checking it. I don't think it's really fair, like I said before, to check the sort of tables because it's all a bit, mm. all a bit random. I mean, I don't think fixture-wise anything like this has happened since maybe 2010 when we had sort of big freeze and half of Winter got called off. I know yeah. sort of, sort of my team. I think, although I weren't massive fan then, but looking back at it, I think we had like all of our December called off, and that puts you behind. You five or six games behind on the league table, so it's hard to compare, really. Um, they say, they say, don't they? After ten games, I think that's. I wouldn't even look after twenty this year. Maybe twenty mm. halfway through the season because there will literally be teams by Christmas that probably have played five games less than they should have. So it's mm. gonna, it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be relent. It, it will be relentless this year, especially with all the games. There'll be times where. Said some months you have eight games, so mm. some teams could get nine points within a week and are moving ten places up the table. It's mental. Yeah, so that's sort of done for sort of the, the career bit. But I've got a few uh, sort of general knowledge, not general knowledge. Um, I mean, it sound like a quiz, but just general questions about yeah. stuff and sort of some generic ones we ask everyone. Um, first one, and this is why I was bringing up, as mentioned, that you signed for the southern teams uh, for this question because you have signed I think, uh, all bar sort of what you call. Uh, Bit, no need to know, like Birmingham area, I think, just testing yeah. my knowledge and not at Nottingham, of course. The reason is, a lot of your teams have been Southern. So, and we asked this, the opposite uh, to Elliot Duvel, he's always played for Northern teams. Was that a, an option really for you, that you perhaps got a, a, a an offer from a Northern team, but it was one of those where, well, oh, you've got your family and you've got, you know, your friends and all that, so you'd have to relocate compared to perhaps driving an hour or two to sort of... Same, yeah, same definitely. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think it's like any walk of life or football. Anyone that's working, the opportunity, especially if you're moving and you're uprooting, the opportunity has to be good enough. I think the time I could have gone up north again was when I signed for Gillingham. Uh, there were a couple other clubs. I think Mansfield. I think Berry. Well, lucky, I luckily dodged that one because that could have that could have ended in tears um, with everything that happened to them. There was a few others as well that were, uh, that were more northern based, but like I said, I was it wasn't to do with Gillingham really being in the south. It's just the fact that they were the most keen to sign mm. me, and they were the most persistent. But I would have just gone for me. I was at an age, more, not so much now, where you're a bit older, you're a bit more rooted. Uh, you've got roots in a certain place. It's more difficult. But back then, I, if the opportunity was right, I would I, could, I would have gone yeah to a northern. Northern team, nothing against the North. In fact, actually, I enjoy most of the away trips I look forward to are the ones in the North because I, I enjoy the atmosphere. Uh, always think the stadium, the atmosphere is really is really good um, for a lot of the Northern teams in the EFL. Yeah, the reason why I started asking the, this type of, this question is because when I've been doing the research for these things, not only the ones I've done, but ones I'm going to do in the future, you do notice there's a big trend of players staying in the general area. And I wonder, mm. I wonder how much of an effect that has sort of on clubs in certain areas because you know you're let's say a uh, sort of a rock or whatever and there's a general trend of recruiting northerners if the, the crop of footballers who are from the north and that particular few years are, are bad it's not really a, i mean it's not really fair not fair um, it screws them over but you get a good crop of footballers from the north actually the pool you're playing with even though perhaps on the surface it might appeal of like okay there were so many pro footballers in england that's what you're playing from there's obviously the you know, it's not just the uh, line on the map or whatever. It's also the realistic fact of like, if you're from London, and you you know you, you don't want to have to travel up to somewhere like Newcastle or whatever. So that's all look on wherever sort of the people from your area are from. I guess that's also 
it's true the youth academy is bringing lads through, but also true of first team football or wherever they're coming from. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, think, I think at the end of the day, in to answer that, I think in in more of the lower leagues, it's financially really is it viable for me to move? Like you said, mm. un, unless. And I think there are clubs now that probably Southern players financially makes it so like a Salford with mm. the money they've got behind them. People might say it's financially viable for me to go there and the same for certain clubs maybe in the South uh, for the Northern players. Mm. But um, I think definitely in the lower leagues that's probably more if someone's sort of, like I said an, an older pro or has sort of settled and got family roots within a certain area whether it be north or south, it's very difficult to kind of uproot unless said it's a real good opportunity, uh, whether it be football-wise or financially, yeah. I think the lesson we learn from that is be born in the Midlands and you'll be all right either way. I yeah, think. exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah. I wonder if there's some kind of link that, that players who are from the Midlands do better because they've got more opportunities to go to different clubs so they do better. I'm, I might research that. Yeah. Yeah. Any un- university guys out there doing something like that? Do research that and send it to me because I'm interested in that type of thing. Uh, well, speaking of sort of university education, I uh, can see from your Twitter bio, you've sort of moved away from, well, not moved away, but uh, done some sort of education, uh, just have a look, sports, uh, exercise, science graduate. Mm-hmm. Reason yeah. for that then, yeah. what would that be? Um, look, I think we go wrong. We all work, we work hard as professional sportsmen, but... Uh, Physically, the body can only uh, can only probably take two two and a half hours training max, so it leaves a lot of time uh, in the day to uh, twiddle your thumbs. Well, I said most. I think most maybe on Netflix are playing uh, mm. COD, which mm. don't get wrong, I do as I do as well. But uh, it I got to the point. I think I started when I was sort of back in at Arsenal. Um, just thought I'd undertake it. Like I, I did all right at school. Um, thought might as well make the most of the time I've had. Uh, and it took a while, but in the end, like it was really good. Enjoyed it. Um, obviously, it involves sport and that I may may not use it uh, in the future, but uh, it, was, it was an achie- Like I said, as a, as a sportsman, you, you like to achieve things and I know it wasn't on the football pitch, but it was a, an achievement for me and I hope, like I said, hopefully it can um, be, as, be of use in, in, in the future, whatever I do. Post uh, football, yeah, like you said, we sort of time off, and like I said, you get a lot of free time and, and stuff like that. Is that something nowadays, even at your level, perhaps maybe 10 years ago, this is something would have only been available to Premier League players, but now that where you've got access to stats and stuff like that, where if you wanted to, and I imagine the club would do something like this, perhaps that there are now websites where you can buy a subscription and review all of your performances and you can have some there to look itself. Is that something you do do or is that a bit too creepy for your sort of feature out of it? No, 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 I do it. Um, I think self-analysis is always good. Um, to be fair, uh, most clubs now, um, even in the National League level, uh, that have some form of access to it might not be as comprehensive as maybe like a Man City do where mm. they get in every breakdown but uh, um, with technology now you can do some good self-analysis um, or some opposition analysis and I do yeah from time to time I think there's some players that don't do it at all and like, I understand why um, I as I've got older uh, when I was younger I think I was very much engrossed in football as I've got mm. older there needs to be a balance where you can take yourself out because I think you can you can sometimes overwork and get a bit of burnout so yeah um, now and again uh, whether it be watch back last game, we get sent it through, or whether it be um, said, uh, of some opposition analysis, we get sent through. Nice, uh, def- definitely, um, definitely something I think a lot of the, the boys uh, do now. Yeah, is it something that you can tell is it having an impact in terms of being good? Because is, is there, so I mean, as you know, perhaps you're playing you know what I'm coming up against this guy where you've sort of gone all right this guy tends to do this tends to do that is that something when in a game you've got right look I've got him he's doing this what I thought he was or is it something that's where you can't really tell that it's you can't tell why you're doing it that it's having an impact but that's when you go back yourself you can tell oh look, I'm doing this differently 
yeah, I think it's a subconscious thing. But I think at this, the level I'm playing at now, I think I know quite a lot of the players anyway and the team. So you, you kind of have it in your head anyway. It's, I think the analysis part is definitely key for maybe your set pieces um, and stuff like that because teams have different set pieces. I might have... So we played Notts County at the weekend and they have like a block set piece where one of them pulls out and they get a cut back for a shot. Um, and we knew, we knew about that just through analysis. So you kind of, in terms of general play, I think it's more of a subconscious thing because the game's going on. Sometimes mm. it's difficult to sit and think, all right, what, what did I do through that analysis? What did they do then? Mm. But I think that's just the general understanding is helped it, I think on, it's done on the training pitch but it's it's cemented through maybe analysis we do and um, that's why I think it's obviously it's, it's not the be all and end all but it's definitely a key part of um, elite well elite level sport now yeah. uh, another thing you can see from your Twitter uh, Twitter header certain name are in your header what's that about yeah. how did that come about I was when I was at Arsenal um Brazil were uh, in the Olympics. I mean, it was London 2012, I think. Yeah, it was London 2012 because that's why they were at, uh, at London Colney down uh, at the training ground. They come and trained. Um, they took a real strong team, actually. Mm. So you had your likes of your Thiago Silvers, Marcelo, uh, Neymar, Oscar, Hulk, um, Lucas, uh, Mora. Loads of obviously top quality players. And... Uh, Every now and again, I think they trained for a week or two. Every now and again, they needed like extra bodies. So they got sent the youth team, the pros. Uh, we just dropped in and trained with them. And uh, that was, again, one of the best experiences I've had in football. Um, you're playing A with the best of the best. You're talking about world-class players here. Um, but just Brazil, I, I don't know about you, but for me, the international team, I suppose going through... It's been the Spain, France, but I think Brazil is Brazil. Like they've always been that team, uh, mm. and just training with them, you realise as a nation why they produce such good footballers. Because football to them is serious, but it's the enjoyment they get out of it, and you can see like it's a more more so a religion for for them. Uh, and yeah, no, it was, it was unreal. What an, what an experience, that, something that I'll never forget, yeah. Is that the type of thing, like I said, you train with them for a bit? I think that's the type of thing where you can only really get it when you're a youngster because it's the type of thing where it's like, right, youngsters, go do this, where the opportunity perhaps wouldn't have come out. Because I can't imagine if Brazil was to come over, right, right, can you get the older shot first team to come yeah. and train? But it's one of them where they'll know, Arsenal, big team, Arsenal, can you help us out? Or Chelsea, can you help us out type of thing? And then you send someone over. It's the only type of thing where you, you're going to get Either of you are part of Arsenal first team or anything, or like you, a youth team being part of it, and they said, right, send you over. Yeah. Um, so, how long were you sort of involved with them? So just a week or whatever? Or of- yeah, yeah, just a couple of training sessions. I mean, I'll be honest, one, one again, again, the benefits of being at Arsenal is because of where the training ground is based. Um, a lot of the teams that international teams that were playing at Wembley, so England trained their loads. So, I was lucky not. I wasn't lucky enough to train with England, but I'm lucky enough to watch a lot of England training sessions. Barcelona, mm-hmm. uh, when they played the Champions League final at Wembley, when they beat Man United 3-1, they trained. So, yeah, you're looking at um, you're looking at those, like, first-hand, unbelievable um, um, teams. Just, uh, yeah, are really good. Yeah, so I say... You put you again. You're probably not going to get to do something like that again. So it's one of those. Even if you're a youngster, it's one of those things where it's like that's sort of the. Could say it's a highlight of your career, even if it wasn't sort of your first team. But I think it comes in all different ways with different experiences that can have pros and cons. And being next to some of those players and challenging yourself, even in sort of training, learning little bits and stuff like that, and little things to do. Imagine is quite good. So we t- sort of touched on this before young players coming through what advice would you give now having come through as a youngster and played experienced football what advice would you give to a youngster coming through uh, nowadays looking to get in professional football I 
think I'll revert back to what I said before. I think the main thing is enjoy what you're doing for number one, because I think it's very difficult if you don't if you don't still have the love to play and you enjoy playing. I think it's very difficult to make a career out of it for well for a prolonged mm. period of time. Um, I ideally I think be prepared to learn, and w- whether that be through coaching, but also try and play. Uh, and there's a fine balance really because I see a lot of players that break into a first team maybe 16, 17 and they get to a point in their career where they've played a lot of games but then when they move up the levels it it looks like they haven't been coached so it's about finding that balance go somewhere where you're going to learn whether it be a manager or you're able to get that time on the training pitch but also where there's a chance you're going to play first team football Uh, and that's that would be my sort of my main advice. The enjoyment part is paramount, but also what's going to be best for your development. You need to be asking questions as well as look, people, managers and coaches are always going to ask questions of you, um, what you're going to bring to the table, but you need to sort of flip it on its head and you've got to think what, what, what's this club going to bring the, to the table for me? And it, and it is difficult because football moves so quick and, uh, there's so many different fact, fractions uh, factions to a football club that people don't really know about, but it's about doing your research. And uh, there's some great sort of teams as a young player that I'd think to myself, they're a good team to be at. I think like you're trying to think of teams in sort of, obviously you said your, your, your Chelsea's, but it's really difficult to get in the first team there. But look lower down, like your Charlton's produce pr- prolific of producing good young players team clubs like that um, even you're not in forests now mm. just uh, that's what I'd say uh, best player you've played with on your team oh tough one uh, I'd say the the best two players I've ever played with and this is going back to sort of youth days I'd say Jack Wilsh is definitely one of them uh, and Ravel Morrison in terms of talent wise I've n- never seen anything mm. like like it before but yep. uh, yeah, um, difficult uh, as I've sort of played. Yeah, as I've, um, with, I've said more, I've played with some great players, but they're the two kind of standouts I think I've ever, ever played with. Yeah. Also, I've had Morrison got said about him. Um, I think it was, uh, Sheffield United last year, I'm not sure where he is now, I'm not double checked that, but it's one of those where it gets said a lot and brought up by people who were with him. Like, oh, this lad should have gone on. He should have gone on and done this. From what you saw, what do you think should have happened in a, a, a not even ideal world, but even just a, a good world? Sort of a, a different oh, scenario no doubt, for him. No doubt for me, he'd be in the England team now. He honestly, talent-wise, I've played against like Jack. Everyone's raving about Jack Grealish, top top player. I've played against Jack Rick Grealish, Ravel Morrison, better than him, mm. talent-wise. Paul Pogba, everyone bangs on about Paul Pogba. Ravel Morrison was miles better than Paul Pogba at the same age. It, it, like I'm telling you, this guy was crazy good at football. Some of the stuff he did, you just couldn't teach. And mm. I'd say the same for Jack as well. If Jack Wilshere had a good run of fitness back when he was younger, he'd be in the England team now. Easy. I, mm. I it's don't no disrespect to the players that playing in the midfield now they couldn't um, weren't at the level that Jack Jack was you watched him against that, that game against Barcelona everyone mentions it but yeah I was there first hand I saw it he's he's going toe to toe with arguably two of the best three the best midfield of all time in Xavi Busquets and Iniesta I, I mean you really see that happen at a player who's what 18 years of age um, but that's again that's just that is football uh, and that's what we you you got the players with the talent but uh, the longevity is that's why you've got to give massive respect to your Ronaldo's and your Messi's because they're at that level week in week out for, for a dec- over a decade it's uh, crazy yeah uh, final question uh, and this is something we want to make a fixture of it ask every week if I remember um, you learn throughout your career play lots of games move teams quite a lot Falling out with players, falling out with managers, you made good friends, had lots of different experiences. But if you could go back and change one moment, just to see, not even saying this is what's going to make it definitely, but go back and change that one moment and see where that would have gone. 
that's gone better, gone worse. What moment would you change and why? It's a funny one, this, because I think the only time ever I would have, because I think it was a football, a lot of it, again, it's char- a lot of it, sometimes chance and you, there's so many different factors. But I, as, And as much as it's difficult for me to say, because I was, I'm actually an Arsenal fan, but I probably would have left Arsenal maybe when I was about 15, 16 and gone somewhere else. Mm. And I think because I think as much as you're a fan and you're in that environment where it's elite and you, and I, I wouldn't have had the experiences, like you said, you train with like the first team, your idols, like the stuff we said with Brazil, mm. all that stuff. But, at the end of the day, I've seen some great players go within that academy and then they, they're not going to play in the first team. Uh, and I think to myself now, if you, if I'd have left maybe a bit earlier, gone somewhere else, like you said, I've mentioned teams, like you said, I would have gone somewhere, maybe like a Nottingham Forest earlier. Mm. You've got more of a chance there. And then I think it's when you're at a young age now, and I said, I've seen a lot of players who maybe weren't the most talented or I said as compared to our players, but they got in, played what, 50, 60 games within the first team. And then they're already on that kind of, in, on that ladder. You, you play, and in, in these days, you play 10 games for a, like a Nottingham Forest. You get a you get a move to a Premier League team or you're at least linked to one. It's just, mm. it's just how it works. I mean, back in the day, you needed two full seasons, I think. Uh, you needed 100 games under your belt before uh, that was even thought of. But I just think the way the top teams now kind of have the money to spend and they see, oh, look, so-and-so, 18-year-olds played 10 games in the champ or five games in the champ and already he's, they've got price tag of what millions of pounds on his head mm. and I think maybe I would have done that possibly differently um, but at the time I would not have done it if you know what I mean it's, it's only in hindsight to be honest yeah I guess that sort of links back to what you said before what question before about advice to younger players and that sort of mm. listen I get that if you're especially if that's your team that you're going to want to, you have that dream of playing for them, but you've also got to be realistic and it's probably not going to happen. Maybe lower leagues and you're involved, but at that level, it's just, you know, you've got to be sort of realistic as well. And that's why I like that yeah. question because it's, like I said, if that would have happened, it would have been interesting to see what would have happened better for the worse, you know, the, the way. And I think that's also, it sort of links to what happens, uh, what you said, bef- said before about some of the players you've played with and stuff is the, the way that the careers go. And this is something I see, when you follow, it sounds a bit strange, but it'll, it'll make sense in the end. When you follow players on Twitter and it's like, you look back and you see one of them's gone up and playing the championship and then some are playing National League South. But then you go back and look, mm. they were the same age, playing the same number of games for the team you support. And then they've gone on these mm. different routes and it's sort of crazy to think how it all happens. But that's just difference of opinion and they get an injury, they get lucky and, and stuff like that. Yeah. I think, it's like I said back before, I think, Again, these there's some players that you 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 just know like so I bring it back like a Jack Wilshire when I'm coming you just knew he'd be in the first team through some way whether he'd maintain that career and look it hasn't it didn't work out for him in the end at Arsenal and at the moment he's a free agent but you knew at the time that he played in the first team, he was just that good mm. but then most of the I'd say ninety percent of the other players don't get me wrong they were top players and quality players like. But you knew that most of them would need to be in order to get to the top, or they'd need to be in the right place at the right time under the right manager. All those fitting boxes needed needed to be ticked, and that is football. And that's why you get some of the great stories like your Jamie Vardy's, all them players, because at, at some point those boxes aren't ticked. But he gets his move to Leicester, and that is that's the perfect club for him. And then eventually he's able to. Because he clearly had loads of talent, he's, he's he's managed to build that up, and each time, and then he's won a Premier League, and now, arguably, he's probably one of the top three strikers in the Prem. So it just mm. that's just how it is, yeah. Yeah, and that was the last question. But one thing we do always ask, um, for for players at least, uh, message to you know, obviously older shot now, message to older shot fans for what you say to them for the rest of this season. I would just say to them, look, it's a difficult time for fans. Um, 
can't obviously come and watch us play in person, but uh, stick with us for now. And fingers crossed, we can uh, get everyone back in the stadium cheering us on. And uh, so hopefully, some and we we can't wait as players. Um, it's, it, we know, we know how bad it is for you, but it's one of the it's one of the worst things not being able to play in front of fans. We're grateful we're able to play for number one, but it's not the same. So we can't wait. Um, keep getting behind the club, uh, and can't wait to see you. And hopefully, when you do come back, it's on the we're on the run of a good successful season. So yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sort of coming on and. A bit of a longer one than usual, I think. We're just over maybe about an hour and a half. That's the longest one we've done so far. Uh, just want a message to anyone watching you if you've got this far, of course. Uh, we've got other ones. Uh, Jeff King, Elliot Durrell, Sean Donnell. I've got, I keep doing this every single one, so it's going to be a point when I'm, I've done 10 and I've got built an email. Yeah. But it's going to be some... like the game where you've got to remember all the items in the shopping basket, oh, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I, think, I think I've played games like that where you've got to remember everyone else's name. Uh, but like I said, we'll have a link in the description so you can go and have a you know, go and have a watch them. And, you know, even if it's not your team, even if it's not your team, it, it might be a player who plays for you one day. And then if you've watched his interview, you can sort of brag about how much you know about him. And uh, thanks for you taking time out to sort of, um, sort of have a chat. And, and listen, maybe in a year, Bromley got promoted, playing playing League Two, whatever, maybe one at Wembley, who knows, you'd come on and tell us about that. And also, um, yeah. yeah, thanks for taking time out and having a chat.